Let's look at how the Young's modulus varies across a fault zone or the strength of the rock varies across a fault zone. Imagine this yellow plane is a horizontal plane and FF represents a fault that has been mapped by a geologist. And imagine across the fault from these points I have picked up the rock samples from the surface and then I have sent these rock samples in the laboratory for the stress strain test. We can find out the Young's modulus. The Y I am writing here instead of E is the Young's modulus. And if I plot the Young's modulus along this vertical plane, this is going to be the plane for the graph. Say for this sample, I have plotted some Young's modulus for this. What is commonly observed is that we can get this kind of a pattern, V kind of geometry. So what it means that as you go further away and then you are going towards the fault plane, as you are going towards the fault plane, the Young's modulus or the strength of the rock is reduced and then as you are going away from the fault plane, say this sample, that sample and that sample, the Young's modulus will increase. Why this happens? This has not been found in all places but in several places in the world from the sampling this kind of V pattern of the Young's modulus or the rock strength has been found. So why it has happened? It has happened because when faulting happens usually close to the fault plane say within this zone the rocks are more intensely deformed and the degree of deformation reduces across the fault plane. By the way, FF is here the fault trace, it is not the fault plane. The fault plane has intersected a horizontal surface, FF is the fault trace. What do I mean when I say that the degree of deformation increases or decreases? Here these rocks can be more intensely fractured and as you go away from the fault, the fracture intensity or the fracture density is commonly reduced which has been seen. So since these rocks are highly fractured, they are already deformed, the Young's modulus will be reduced. Now this ideal V pattern may not be there, it may be possible that we get this kind of curve, it is possible and in terms of plots, some plots can go like this. So this is how the strength of the rock varies, it can be a sharp point as V over here, it can be a U geometry or this kind of geometry. Now as I told this is not true for all the faults, suppose before the faulting happened the terrain was already deformed and there are fractures and the fracture density here is more and here is less and then a faulting happens, in that case such relationship may not be found. Let us look at the deformation of rock and its corresponding mechanical models. We start with the elastic solids behavior, we know for elastic solids stress is proportional to strain, E is the Young's modulus, so in stress versus strain curve it will be a straight line. What is the mechanical analog? We can think of a spring and with a little stress or force applied by pulling the spring will deform. The spring extends its length and if I remove the, remove my hand, remove the stress, the spring goes back to its initial position. This is true so long the stress is not too high. If I pull the spring very hard, then the spring will undergo permanent deformation. That I am not talking. I am talking that there is a spring and I am pulling it very little. So the spring immediately responds, it extends in its length and when the stress is removed, it goes back. That is the behavior of the elastic solid. What is that? I take a material or a rock or any solid and then I apply a compression or extension. Imagine so long I am extending or compressing the material is deforming but when the stress is removed the material comes back to its initial geometry, initial shape and size. In that case that is an elastic solid. So here is the curve, here is the equation and here is the mechanical analog. Now we look into the behavior of Newtonian viscous fluid. What is the difference between solids behavior, rheological model and the Newtonian viscous fluid? Here stress is equal to 
the proportionality constant instead of Young's modulus we call it dynamic viscosity or simply as a viscosity and instead of strain here we write strain rate epsilon dot indicates strain rate epsilon dot we can write as d epsilon dt or we can write as del epsilon del t. So, we plot instead of epsilon in case of Newtonian viscous fluids along the x axis we plot epsilon dot along y axis we plot the sigma applied stress and then the straight line behavior is found. Now, there is a mechanical analog of that. What is that? Think of there is a piston and then there is this full of some viscous fluid and I have shown that by some dots. Now, imagine there is a piston and this piston is a special kind of piston that it is perforated piston that means there are perforations here. Now, imagine I pull the piston in this direction. If I pull the piston what will happen? The piston will move in this direction and when the stress is released will the piston go back? Our common sense says that the piston will not go back. So that is the behavior of the fluids. Imagine a fluid has flown will and if the force or the stress that leads to this flow is stopped, will the fluid come back to its initial position? The answer is no. So, in that case such a model will represent a Newtonian viscous fluid. Now, we are going to see another behavior more realistic behavior is the plastic behavior of the solids. What is that? I come back come first to the graph stress versus strain plot. There is an elastic range of solids if I keep on increasing the stress the strain increases linearly. But after a while what happens for a certain amount of stress what we call as the yield stress this amount of sigma even if that yield stress is reached and we stop the applied stress the body keeps on straining continuously. For increasing further strain we need not increase the stress this is the situation. Now this entire behavior can be broken into two parts where there is a linear relationship of course, that is also linear relation, but in this linear relationship where stress proportional to strain this part is known as the elastic range and this is comparable with this diagram and is comparable with the spring. And then beyond this elastic range is a plastic behavior this portion can be presented in terms of a mechanical model which I have shown over here. So, when I say it is a plastic behavior I am essentially talking about this portion I am not talking about that portion and the materials composite behavior can be that first it is elastic and then it is plastic. Now, let us try to understand how to represent this kind of deformation. Imagine there is an object lying on a horizontal surface maybe a duster lying on a horizontal plane. Now, you are pulling that duster to pull the duster it is not that a very small stress is applied and the duster will immediately start moving it will need some amount of stress and that amount of stress is comparable here with the yield stress. Once the certain amount of stress is applied then the duster will move, but will the duster come back if I remove the stress? Imagine there is a duster kept on a horizontal plane and I pull the duster then I remove my hand will the duster go back? The duster will not go back. So, in this case plastic behavior what happens comparing in from the mechanical model to the real case suppose the stress is made 0 the body has already deformed permanently the body will not come back to its initial configuration. So, what is the basic difference between the elastic range and the plastic behavior? In the elastic behavior within this range if I remove the stress then the body comes back to undeformed position. But within this plastic behavior range what happens if the material is stopped in terms of applied stress or applied force the material will not come back to its initial position. So, this plastic behavior can be represented by this mechanical model. Now, as you understand this spring can represent the elastic range and this portion is represented by that model. What about the entire behavior right from starting from elastic range and then going to the plastic behavior? For that we will mix up these two mod mechanical models. How to mix up? We can think that there is a horizontal surface on which I have kept a solid and then I have attached a spring with it. Now, what will happen? Imagine I am pulling the spring. First thing first, the spring will be extended, the duster will not move, the solid is not going to move the spring is very sensitive spring we are thinking very sensitive to deformation and stress. 
So the spring first extends. So what kind of deformation is happening here? Elastic deformation and after a certain amount of stress being applied then only the duster will move that certain amount of stress is basically the yield stress and after yield stress is applied you see in my diagram the duster has moved and suppose I remove my hand I remove the stress will the spring come back yes my common sense says that the extended spring if I remove my hand will come back to its position so the elastic behavior of the rock what 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 is happening there a partly uh, full recovery is happening within the elastic range but will the duster come back to its initial position you see it will not come back so the plastic deformation is there so the what is the composite behavior now i come to this graph when i was pulling the spring this is the behavior of the elastic range the material immediately responds strain keeps building up as stress keeps increasing if I do so if I continuously keep increasing the stress and a time comes some yield stress sigma when the duster moves and when the stress is released the spring comes back to its initial position but this plastic deformation has taken place and the material cannot come back to its initial position initial configuration so altogether the material has undergone some deformation as you see the duster has moved so these are the mechanical models and here is are the graphs in this way we have compared we are now going to see some of the more complicated deformation behaviors now we look at several complex materials behavior to start with the bingham body the bingham substance what it says that such a body shows a viscous deformation in addition to an initial elastic deformation and the presence of ill stress let me explain what it means when we say that there is an elastic deformation and the presence of ill stress naturally you understand that mechanical model will consist of this object or the weight and the spring which i have explained i said that when these two are taken together it takes care of the initial elastic deformation and then the plastic deformation and now look at the definition here of the bingham substance it shows a viscous deformation in addition to these two and what was the model mechanical model shown for the mechan uh, for the viscous materials behavior it was the dash pot so here that for that reason we have brought the dash pot the object or the weight and the spring in a series connection now in such a configuration imagine i am pulling the spring first the spring is such that immediately it will respond to stress and it will get strained so you can see the diagram this object has not moved don't go by the exact length here in my diagram that might change little bit but imagine but I must try to understand that this object has not moved at all the weight has not moved only the spring has been extended in length now what will happen if I keep on increasing the stress you understand that this object is going to move and now you can see between these two positions this object has gone in that direction and as this object but the weight has moved to the right hand side direction you can see that perforated piston here has also moved over there so what is happening when this plastic deformation is taking place simultaneously the viscous deformation is also happening again we will go back to the definition it says it shows a viscous deformation there is a viscous deformation in addition to an initial elastic deformation what is the initial elastic deformation it is over here and the presence of an ill stress where is the ill stress involved here the stress for which this weight started moving is the ill stress so beyond the ill stress the plastic behavior started and the material also behaved like viscous fluid they acted together so it is not a purely plastic body it is not a purely viscous body either so and then when you remove the stress what will happen the spring will come back to its initial length this length and that length you can see they are nearly the same but will this object go back no so as you see this object is standing here will the dashboard therefore go back no that will also not move and you compare with this position and that position you can see when the stress is removed how do i know because the spring is no more extended it is shown as shortened of initial length and the piston also has stayed there piston has not come back so there are certain irreversible processes in the deformation of the body the plastic component of the deformation will be non recoverable when the stress has stopped the viscous fluid component of deformation will also be coverable now let's look at the graph 
Here, note that stress is plotted along the x-axis. In my some of my earlier diagrams, I was plotting strain along the x-axis. And here, strain rate is plotted here. Be careful, this is strain rate, not stress. Now, for a common Newtonian fluid, we know stress proportional to strain rate. So, this kind of straight line can be thought about. But in case of a Bingham substance, this will be the graph. And this amount of stress is called the yield stress. That means when this amount of particular stress amount was produced by pulling the spring, then the viscous component of deformation started and that relationship was linear then onwards. Now let us look at another material's behavior and start with the Maxwell body or the elastico viscous body. So, Maxwell body will have one elastic component of deformation and the viscous component of deformation. We have said for an elastic component of deformation, a spring will represent the mechanical model and I have discussed that for viscous body, a dashpot has been used. So, once we say elastic or viscous body, in this case spring and dashpot are arranged in a series. So, this is a perforated piston, that means if I push the piston, the fluid will not be compressed, the fluid can go out to that direction. If I pull the piston in this direction, that means this fluid will go in this side or in other words, the piston will move in that direction. The fluid is not compressed in this process. And be careful, when I say there is a fluid inside, I am not talking about this fluid's viscous behavior. This is a model which represents equivalent situation of deformation in the solid material or in the fluid, in another kind of fluid that we are thinking. So, for example, Maxwell body. I repeat, this fluid is not the Maxwell fluid, Maxwell material. This spring is not the Maxwell material. Together, the configuration is giving us a mechanical model which is comparable and only comparable with mechanical, with the Maxwell body or with the Bingham and whatever I said earlier, whatever I am going to say subsequently, these are all the models. This fluid is not the material that we are talking about. Okay. So, now here if I pull the spring, what will happen? The spring will immediately react, it will extend in length. On application of stress, strain has been produced. We are thinking essentially a spring which is sensitive to deformation, which is sensitive to stress. Will the piston move? The answer is no. Now imagine more and more stress is applied. In that case, the piston will move. And after the piston has moved, as you see this line has gone to that direction. Suppose I remove the stress, the spring will come back to its initial geometry, initial length as I have shown here. But will the piston go back? The answer is no, piston will not go back. So, what has happened altogether? For a Maxwell body, if you apply a stress, first elastic deformation happens and if you keep on increasing the stress, then the viscous component of deformation will take place. Once you remove the stress, the elastic component of deformation will be restored. The body will partly come back to its initial geometry configuration, but it will not fully come back because we can see the dashpot does not come back or the viscous deformation is permanent. That is what we discuss. So, another point, if the spring is pulled suddenly, what will happen? How the body will behave? If we say that the spring is pulled suddenly, let us add a few more assumptions. What is that? There is the fluid which is highly viscous and the spring is sensitive to deformation. So, if the spring is pulled suddenly, what will happen? The spring will extend in its length, but there is no viscous deformation that is going to happen. And this is the situation, imagine pitch is thrown on the ground. A sudden stress is applied on the pitch surface, some configuration, some geometry which is thrown. Since all of a sudden it is applied, it will undergo only elastic deformation. That means it will deform, but then that deformation will be restored. There will be no viscous component of deformation in this place. So, pitch is an example that it can be compared in this way as a Maxwell body. Now, think that the pitch is not thrown on the ground, no sudden stress is applied on the pitch, rather the pitch is pulled slowly. Then what will happen? That model will be comparable to the viscous component of deformation of the Maxwell body the pitch will deform. When I say viscous component of deformation, that means when the stress is removed, the pitch will not come back. The Maxwell body does not come back to its initial configuration. So, if slowly the pitch is pulled by some means, then the deformed pitch will not come back to its initial configuration. Now, let us look at the strain time curve for the Maxwell body. Suppose strain is plotted along the y axis and time is plotted along the x axis. 
then this is the relationship that a linear relation can be found this distance along the y axis is equal to sigma by e what is sigma by e we can look at the linear relation stress is equal to young's modulus multiplied by strain so sigma divided by e is basically the strain coming from the elastic component that one is over here and then there is a linear relationship now we are going to see the total amount of strain produced and the total amount of strain rate etc in the maxwell body and how the numerical expressions will go like so here is a from the elastic component i can write the total amount of strain due to the elastic deformation epsilon 1 is equal to sigma divided by the e now imagine that the total stress is maintained constant and that total am that same stress is also acting leading to the viscous behavior of the material so for the newtonian viscous fluid the relation is stress is equal to strain rate multiplied by dynamic viscosity or the viscosity so from there we can write strain rate epsilon 2 dot is equal to sigma divided by mu now for a constant applied stress that means sigma is not changing the total amount of strain can easily be worked out that means epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 i have to do note here it is epsilon 2 dot so from epsilon 2 dot first i have to get into the epsilon value which is easy epsilon is equal to because this in this indicates d epsilon 2 dt so therefore epsilon is equal to sigma t divided by mu now that can be added up so this is the total constant for the constant applied stress the total amount of strain produced is from the elastic component this much and from the viscous deformation that much so this is one important expression that we have reached now if we want to note what is the total amount of the strain rate in this process so that this strain total strain rate can be broken into the strain rate coming from the elastic deformation and the strain rate coming from the viscous deformation now for the elastic case that means we start with this equation note that there is no dot involved so if i write d epsilon 1 dt i have to do d sigma dt and divide by e e is independent of time it's a material property strength of material so it is not going to change so therefore from there what i can write epsilon 1 equal to sigma divided by e that means d epsilon 1 dt that means epsilon 1 dot is equal to d sigma dt divided by mu so this epsilon 1 dot value can be put over here and epsilon 2 dot this is already inbuilt for example in viscous relationship stress is equal to strain rate multiplied by the viscosity so there is no need to find out epsilon 2 dot expression it is already there which is sigma divided by mu which can be replaced over here so if we keep the total strain constant suppose in some experiment we want to maintain the total strain constant that means epsilon dot has to be equal to zero now what does that mean that means this entire expression has to be zero that's what i have written here and little more work can be done we can write d sigma divided by sigma and put an integration here is equal to minus e divided by mu this is what the Young's modulus divided by the viscosity. Young's modulus is coming from the elastic behavior, the proportionality constant, and mu is coming from the viscous behavior of the rock. There is also a proportionality constant. So those two proportionality constants are being shown here, and then integration dt. Now, if we do an integration, we can find out that the stress is equal to sigma zero. The initial stress at t equal to zero is equal to e for exponential series, then minus e t again i repeat e is the young's modulus t is the time and divided by mu so e divided by mu this term goes over there so this is another important expression for the maxwell body this is one important expression and the second one is over here in our subsequent work on the rheology of the material or even the earthquake study sometimes these equations are useful